Welcome to the Worst of the Ryan podcast, the Wednesday, November 1st edition. Definitely a good show today, but I'll tell you, a little more contentious than uh, we often get here on the show. Not in like a, like a, I don't know about you, I wasn't upset. I think we just disagreed, you and I and the people interacting with us, a little more than normal. Well, that's because we talked about the smallest hills that we will absolutely die on. Yeah. And it, nobody liked your answers. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think they're actually even the small hills we all want to die on. Many were agreeable. But, true, that's true. But, and then again, we raised the question of then why, why do we all have to die on them when everybody seems to agree? But then there's a couple small hills that come into conflict with each other where we're both on the same small hill, but we're on opposite sides of the small hill and we refuse to leave without a fight. So, uh, but some good content there. Yeah, we also talk about naming your children Mm -hmm. after your friends. That got a little contentious too. And then a man who is stealing from Wendy's. Yeah, and we definitely agree on that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that guy sucks. Good show today. Always feel free to text in your thoughts, 877-2-RADIO-U. We'll catch you next time. See you guys. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. I don't know if you've seen this TikTok going around um, where the guy is refilling an entire ketchup bottle using the pump at Wendy's, calling it an unethical life hack. It's like a whole bottle that some would wrongly keep in the fridge or rightly keep in the fridge, I guess. And uh, he refills it at Wendy's with the pump. It's meant for those little tiny paper cups. Yeah, that's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Although technically not illegal. You can't get arrested for that, right? I feel like you... I guess you can't get arrested for it, but I feel like it's still not right whatsoever. I think... think That you get kicked out. Between the employees at Wendy's and all of the people... In the crowd, in the in the restaurant as well, which may not be very many, you should just perform some kind of citizen's arrest on this man. You Maybe start boo- booing him or something. Yeah, just like really shame him, because this is this is idiotic. He says that he says everything's getting too expensive, so you got to do what you got to do. But you don't got to do this because uh, one, you know what it's going to do is make. Wendy's more expensive for everybody or they're just for the real end of the day. They're just going to move the ketchup pump behind the counter. You're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to do it yourself. Yeah. You have to ask them to do it. It's one thing. I not, there's no clear line, but it's one thing to take like 18 more sauce packets than you need at Taco Bell. That's very, very different to me than filling up an entire ketchup bottle at Wendy's. Yeah, that's just a little bit aggressive. I think that this is just clearly wrong. This is just idiotic behavior. Yeah. I would say if you do this, you're kind of trashy. I would say it's not very nice. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely aren't. And and ketchup, you can live without ketchup. It's not even a necessity. Everything's getting too expensive. Yeah. As if it's some, yeah, as if it's a necessity in your life. Just, uh. It's not a main course. How long is it going to take you to go through that ketchup? You just, if you really want to steal ketchup from Wendy's for home use, just pop into Wendy's every time you need a cup and fill up a couple paper cups of it. You don't do the whole bottle. Just one, imagine somebody's waiting behind you. If I, <laughs> I'm waiting behind, come up to the ketchup pump and a guy's filling up a whole ketchup bottle. And I think something's too, gonna happen. Ketchup is like the one condiment that fast food places are willing to just give you. Mm-hmm. Like barbecue sauce, sweet and sour sauce, whatever the other ones are. They won't give you as many packets as they will of ketchup. If you yeah. ask for ketchup, they're like, here you go. They got plenty. So every time you go to Wendy's, just ask for ketchup. And if you're, if you're really down bad, ask one of your friends. Just be like, hey, because everybody has a ketchup drawer full of the extra ketchup packets they didn't need. Nobody throws those away. You, they're still available. And whenever you see something like this that's technically not illegal, this is the question you always have to ask yourself before you do it yourself. What if everybody did this? Because other people are like, yeah, I do the same thing at Chipotle. I take the little time. I take the bottles of Tabasco home. What if everybody did that? There'd never be Tabasco for anybody. It's not what it's meant for. But everybody thinks that they're 
the main yeah. character and it's about them. So and, yeah, and like they figured out some life hack. N- no, you're just dumb. You're just you're just stealing actually. Yeah. That's right. Just buy the four dollar ketchup it's bottle. It's not technically you illegal. You look ridiculous. But you are just dumb. Get the Kroger brand ketchup. It's two dollars and ninety eight cents. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, how will you ever survive? <laughs> Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. It's time for some useless knowledge. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. You all are going to answer. And if you get the questions right, you win absolutely nothing. Nix. Today is National Authors Day. Very nice. Wonder if we have any authors listening. Not a chance. <laughs> and so the question for useless knowledge today: the famed horror writer Stephen King. You said horror. Horror, yeah. Got it. Horror writer. Mm-hmm. Stephen King has what is known as triskaidekaphobia. Say that again. Triskaidekaphobia. Okay. Which is the irrational fear. Of what? Mm. Triskaidekaphobia. All right. I think our author should know this one, right? Or anybody who's has this fear. I guess so. 8772 Radio U. Text in with your guess for today's author themed useless knowledge. If you get it right, you get it wrong. Doesn't matter. You win nothing. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. We're in the midst of useless knowledge. Today revolves around authors because it's National Authors Day. Isaiah has your question. The famed horror writer, Stephen King, has what is known as triskaidekaphobia. Tris. Gotta break this down. Triskaidekaphobia. Tris. Tris. Kadek. A phobia. Mm-hmm. Got it. Which is the irrational fear of what? Did anybody get it right in the text? People were texting in. Uh-huh. Some people got it right. Oh, really? Julia said having a book turned into a terrible movie. That is incorrect. Uh, <laughs> no, he clear clearly that uh doesn't phase him at all. <laughs> <laughs> But some people did uh, text this one incorrectly. Um, I let me, again, let's break it down. Tris, of course, we all know Tris is uh, Latin for long, and Kadek, Latin for words, and Phobia, fear. So, long words. You're going long words. Yes. I can't be sure anything in your breakdown was correct. <laughs> <laughs> The correct answer, which Ben and Stephanie and many others texted in, Uh is the irrational fear of the number 13, Mm. which you would think is a horror writer. That's like, isn't like 13 supposed to be a scary number? Mm. Maybe that's what freed him up to write such horror, is many other horror writers would focus on the number 13. And he's straight away. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to ignore it because I'm afraid. And it forced him to find other things that were scary besides just that. I wonder how you come across that that fear of yours, <laughs> Trishkadekaphobia. All right, let's do some rapid fire. Often cited as the greatest writer in the Eng- English language and the bane of every high school student's existence, what author has an estimated 4 billion copies of his works in circulation? Uh... Well, I, I'm going to have to say William Shakespeare. Correct. Yeah. What about the best-selling individual book by J.R.R. Tolkien with approximately 140.6 million copies sold? Mm. The Hobbit. Correct. Yeah, The Lord of the Rings would have been a trick question there. How about who was the first female billionaire novelist? Hmm. I'm going to have to go with one of my favorite authors, Agatha Christie. (laughs) The answer I was looking for there was J.K. Rowling. Mm. Good guess, though. Yeah. What about the top fiction book turned into movie? 
at the worldwide box office. I'm going to have to go with A Wrinkle in Time. I was looking for 2015's Jurassic World. Mm, Wrinkle it in Time didn't do it, huh? Didn't quite make it up there. Wait, that's crazy. Jurassic World. I know. Number one. I was pretty surprised with that, too. Yeah. But it got, it got a lot of money. Final question. Who is acknowledged as the all-time best-selling fiction author? J.K. Rowling. The answer I was looking for there was Agatha Christie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a joke? No, I'm being dead serious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But she she's, not, those two. she's not a billionaire. She's not a billionaire, but she is the best-selling no. fiction author, apparently. She must have cheaper books. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's the Price per expensive. book must not be You think she's still much. alive? Agatha Christie? Yeah. I can tell you. I don't even know. I, I said she was my favorite author. I don't even know any of her books. Born? No, she passed away in 1976. No way. Yes, that was a long She wow. was born in 1890. We weren't wow. even close. No, yeah. I didn't know. I, Big Attica Christian fans were just thrown yeah, by that comment. It's just, uh, it's one of those things that's just foreign to me. I know she exists. Murder on the Orient Express. Mm. Halloween Party. Death on the Nile. <laughs> The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Top top books from Agatha Christie. Those are some of them. All right. Let's use his knowledge. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty details, but I've got a lady here that is upset. A gal that is upset. Uh, she was getting married. And at some point along the way, one of her bridesmaids, pregnant, had the baby. And her bridesmaid decided to name her baby the same name as the, the bride, the woman that got married. Without asking permission. And so now the bride, I don't think the wedding really plays in that much. It's just to show their relationship. Like, this is somebody really close, but named... The name to their child after this woman, the same name as this woman, without asking permission. They're friends. Is that problematic? I think it can be. I think this situation, maybe it's a little bit of a stretch. Mm -hmm. Because the baby's name is Mia. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. All right, now, her name is Mia, while the baby's name is Amelia. Okay. The woman's name is Mia, but they're calling Amelia Mia. Uh-huh. That doesn't that, make a lot of sense. Is that naming after her? Her full, the, the grown adult is Mia. Uh-huh. The baby is Amelia. That's a different name. Yeah. Now, the nickname they've given the child is Mia, which is the same name as her full name. Why'd you even name her Amelia? If you're going to call her Mia. Yeah. It's not like that's a really long name. I think that's fine if it's a nickname. Mm -hmm. Because her true name is Amelia. You didn't name her directly. You didn't. The guy's name wasn't Fred and you named the kid Fred. Mm -hmm. It's Mia versus Amelia. So it's two different names. I think if you wanted to name directly after someone that you're very close to, then you should ask. If you so, were going to name them Isaiah, yeah, you I should be like, you, are you cool with that? Why? Because you're not naming them after me if, I'm not, if I don't give that consent. What if I don't really, really even like you? How do you know if I have a child and name it Isaiah and I don't ask you, how do you know I'm even naming it after you? Well, because you see me every day. It doesn't mean I named it after you. That's that pretty, you're, uh, you're just saying that's pretty you, conceited of you, don't you think? Your name, if I had a kid named Hudson, uh -huh. you would be like, that's clearly... You wouldn't have named him that if it weren't for me. You don't know that. I do know oh, that. No, I don't know that. Yes, you do. But on, um, I say Hudson every day. That may actually be more insulting if 
you name a child Hudson, your child Hudson, that'd be weird if you just named a random child. Hudson. If you named your child Hudson and you didn't ask me, that could be, that's arguably more hurtful, not because you named it after me and didn't ask, but because you named it after me and my name didn't even, that it's already my name didn't factor in. That would be. See, I think, too, I would have no issue with it. I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, why would anybody say, hey, I want to name my child after you? No. No chance. Yeah. But I Back don't think it up. It's a child. If but it would be weird if you didn't tell me before, I think. I think it's nice if you're actually naming the child after you, but I don't think you have to. If you just like the name, if I just like the name Isaiah, I should be able to name my child Isaiah without running it past you. My child's going to have a long life that you, you think, may or may not be a part of. But don't you think it'd be weird if you just showed up and you were like, here's Isaiah, and I'd be like, oh, you named him named him my name. And I'd, That's crazy. Yeah. I, maybe you'd say, I would say something like, oh, yeah, we're thinking like Hudson's in the running is one of the top ones, yeah. and I would just, you don't have to ask for permission, mm -hmm. but I'm just looking for like a reaction. Like, what's your reaction to that? Yeah. I wouldn't just be like, here's Hudson. It, it, it's a it's a weird surprise to spring on somebody after the baby's born. They have the same name as you. Yeah, this one's different because it's a nickname. So yeah. I don't really think she has as much to go off of. But if you just showed but, up and you were like, "Here's baby Isaiah," I just, think maybe you run it you run it by them, not asking, but uh, maybe just saying like, "Hudson's yeah, in the running." Just maybe. a head a heads up. Yeah. But what do you think about that? It's you a like big that? world with a lot of names, and although your name is Isaiah, you don't own it. There's other Isaiahs. Yeah, but for I don't my need to friends, ask your permission. for my friends, I own it. You don't get a, you don't get some kind of royalty every time somebody's named Isaiah. Yeah, but like I don't, I own it for my friends. That's how it works. <laughs> like my roommate tried to maybe name they, his, his kid. Maybe Isaiah, I'll name my child Isaiah because I want to reclaim it. Yeah, get it off my chest. Yeah. I love that. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to the riot on Radio U. Isaiah, what is, if I had to ask you, your least favorite chore to do around the house? It's definitely putting away my laundry. Putting away laundry. I'm terrible at it. It is my biggest deficit. I don't understand that. I get my things out of the dryer. Yeah. And I have two laundry baskets. Uh-huh. I put it in the laundry basket to carry it to my bedroom. And those clothes rarely leave that laundry basket. Before I wear them next. In the mornings at like yeah. 4.30 in the morning when I'm getting ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm digging through laundry baskets looking yeah. for clothes. It is terrible. Now I know why all your clothes are so wrinkly. It is. Yeah. Uh, isn't it weird too? Because you hate doing laundry. For me, that's one of the top uh, chores that I don't care. Like I don't mind doing that at all. Uh, it's not actually very. Like, when you think about how time consuming chores are too. Laundry not really time consuming. It doesn't take that long. Unless you iron stuff, mm -mm. it's not very time consuming. For me, which chores do I hate? You know what? Um, dishes. See, I'm okay with that. We need to switch. Yeah. We should be roommates. We should. Yeah. That's a I'll fact. do your laundry for you. And I do all the dishes. That's fine. Yeah. We'll we be. And I don't have a dishwasher either. I just I wash yeah, myself. Yeah. I'm cool See, with that. See, loading the dishwasher and unloading is one thing, but doing the dishes by hand sucks. I hate it. And I'm not alone. And this is this is what's the worst is I feel that anybody who's ever had a roommate probably has had a roommate that is like me and hates doing the dishes. But as much as I hate doing the dishes, I also hate having the sink full, entirely full yep. of dirty dishes. And so if I have had roommates where they would leave the dishes and I don't like doing dishes, but eventually the sink gets full. And then I because I'm a pushover. I'm not going to confront anybody. You do them. I'm the one that winds up. Somehow I wind up washing everybody's dirty dishes. And it feels so unfair. But but if everybody just leaves the dirty dishes forever, it, you and your other two roommates are just leaving all the dirty dishes, uh, that's not good for anybody. That's disgusting. Uh, it's a dirty house. Sometimes in life there are things that just need to be, there need, there's dishes that need to be done. There's chores that need to be taken care of. And even though it may not be your fault that there's a million dirty dishes sitting there, they still got to be dealt with. And so maybe in your life, you've got, you know, you've probably got some issues that, that other people have dumped on you. They're not your fault whatsoever. 
It's just the people that happen to be in your life. They've dumped a bunch of issues on you. And it's like, well, why should I have to do them? Why should I have to deal with these? They're not my fault. But yeah, you still got to, if, if you just keep letting those dishes sit there, like, how's that going to end? It's going to be, make it very difficult to eat and you're going to have mold and it's going to be disgusting. Just get those dishes done. That's what Jesus wants to help you do. He want, He sees the dirty dishes, the stuff piling up in your life that, hey, it's not your fault, whatever. But somebody's got to do it. Jesus will help you do it. He will come with you and deal with the dirty dishes with you. And all you have to do is ask. Say, hey, God, I want that. I want some help. I've got issues piling up. Eh, they're not my fault, but they got to be dealt with. Jesus will do it. You want to know more? Check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. And you know what, Isaiah? Maybe we want to open up the riot hotline for this one, too. Because these are the kind of conversations I love. Uh, recently on Reddit, a post uh, went pretty viral, or, you know, kind of blew up a little bit. Asking the smallest hill that people are willing to die on. You know, the stupidest thing that you are willing to argue over. And I, as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly what mine is. But some of the people, like on Reddit, have wild ones that actually I'm with them on. Here's a good one. Utensils need to be at the end of a buffet. Seems insignificant, right? It's true. But they say... You don't know what utensils you'll actually need until you've gotten all your food. And if you put them at the beginning, then you have to carry them with you as well while you're grabbing your food. So that's actually, that's a hill worth dying on, I think. That kind of thing. So if you've got a small hill that you're willing to die on, 8772 Radio U. I've got two. One is seasonably appropriate. I'll give mine as an example right now. You want to know what it is? Let's hear it. It's that peanut butter cups are called Reese's, not Reese's. You must hate me. And a, and to double down, the people that call them Reese's PCs, what is a PC? Reese's Pieces? Uh, Reese's Pieces? This is something that's driven me so crazy. I think crazy. I do that, actually. Yeah, I think you probably do. Because I, I say, I know I say Reese's. Yeah. So I think I say Reese's Pieces. Yeah, I do that. And, uh, Sorry. yeah, to, it's gotten to the point where I've had to, that's a hill that I've had to just die on. That I've had, I've, I've, I've You've been, died. I've de- I'm dead because <laughs> the, Re- the Reese's pronouncers are not going anywhere. So, you want to think up a couple of your own, and uh, we'll get some text here at 8772-RADIO-U and see what people are willing. The smallest hill you're willing to die on. I've got one more, too, that is you're going to... The people are not going to not gonna gonna like? love hearing this. Yeah, but it's... it's Those are the best ones. Yeah. it's good. You know that, uh, that picture from Tangled where Flynn's got all the knives pointed at him? Mm-hmm. Get your knives ready. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. People are revealing the smallest, most insignificant hills they are willing to die on. And we got some good, good responses. We got Regina who says that toilet paper must go over, not under. She's so militant about this that she will switch it at other people's homes if they have it the wrong way. Oh. I asked her why. I agree, but I didn't have a solid, concrete reason. I just think it's better if it's over. She says it's easier to tear, besides that it just looks better. It is easier to tear. It is, because then if you tear when it's under, then you keep pulling more toilet paper as you tear. But if it's over, you can hold the toilet paper roll in place with your other hand. Easier. Uh, Thomas says the SEC is perennially overrated in all major sports. Look at that. Yeah. We're going to have to disagree on that one, Thomas. You and Hudson. Well, I don't disagree with you, Thomas. Um, Rachel. She says that uh, basically she agrees with me on the Reese's thing. And then she said she's not from the Midwest. But then when you move to the Midwest, 
and they pronounce all in specific. Uh, she lives near, I think, Bell Fountain, Ohio. But if you know about Bell Fountain, Ohio, it looks like it should be pronounced Bell Fontaine. And there's a million places in the Midwest that look like they should be pronounced something French, and they're pronounced in the least French th- way you can possibly imagine. Um, Rachel's right, but once you just accept it, it makes sense. It th- actually, it doesn't make sense, but you just have to accept it. Uh, what do you think of this one, Isaiah? Hannah? Hannah says, cake and especially icing overrated. Ice cream is far superior. Therefore, ice cream cake is far superior to a regular cake. I was with you the whole way until you got to ice cream cake because I don't like ice cream cake, but I do agree that icing and cake are very, especially icing, I agree with that heavily. I think it is. I think it's. I do like ice cream a lot, but not ice cream cake so much. I think it's overrated. But I, I, yeah, I think ice cream cake is overrated. And it seems to be way more expensive than regular cake. Because uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good, I guess. What's yours, Isaiah? I think, and this is a hill I will die on, mm-hmm. I think it is 100% perfectly fine to be a picky eater. I don't know why everyone's always trying to get you to try something. Uh-huh. They act as if, like when your parents... If you're a picky eater, they act as if it's costing them money that you won't try things. Yeah. When in reality, if you're a picky eater, you're set up way better in life. I think. Yeah, because then you don't. Then you're not wasting food. You're not wasting food. Everything you eat, you know you'll like. And so, if I eat chicken tenders every day, then number one, it's cheaper that way mm-hmm. for me to eat that every day. And I'll never, like you said, I'll never waste food. And when you get older, you're less likely to be a little thicker. Mm-hmm. And you'll get used to eating the same thing every day, which is if you're into fitness, eating the same thing every day is literally how people get shredded. That's how it it works. They eat chicken and rice every day. You're not going to find an argument with me here. And in fact, it's crazy because uh, like some people judge you for being a picky eater because they just eat, you know, I like everything. Have you tried it? Yeah. Have you ever tried it? I like oysters. I like broccoli. I like it all. But if you apply that to anything else in life, I like all movies. I like all music. You'd seem like an imbecile. Yes. If you just, if you just said, I like it, I like it all. And no, so yeah. you got you to have some standards. Over the course of time, everybody will become less picky. That's just how it works. But children, if they're picky eaters, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, my other one is that, and this one riles me up every time, is that Ohio is not the birthplace of aviation. <laughs> what it's, a wild... A wild one. It's it's not wild. It seems so personal to you. <laughs> it is. It is very personal because the first flight. This nobody argues this, right? The first flight of anything was in North Carolina, right? That's the birthplace of aviation. Ohio, if you want to say like, oh, the Wright brothers are from here. Well, then maybe Ohio's the womb, the womb of aviation, if you'd like. We'll have to ask the, the uterus, Wright brothers. The uterus of where of, do they think it is? You know? Yeah. I Ask think I see a first flight as the birth of flight. That's how I see it. I see as thinking about flight, planning a flight. But that's it is like, the birthplace. This is where they were born. That's you like know? the gestation period. We're the birthplace of aviation because they were born here. Mm, that's not how it works. That is how it works. They were, they were born here. <laughs> flight wasn't born here. Pilots. Birthplace of pilots, perhaps. Hmm. Uh, I like Karis too. She says that uh, if you say I could care less, it implies that you could care less. And so you should actually say I couldn't care less. Good one. That's a hard one for me to follow. Yeah. Well, people say I could care less when they say, when they're acting like they don't care, but they should say I couldn't care less. Oh, got yeah, it. I'm see? with it now. Now you're going to be upset too. It's funny that most of these, we just have a bunch of agreement on. And yet for some reason, we just have to keep, We have to keep fighting back against some unknown force. It's probably like one person in your life that does it all the time, and that's why everybody hates it. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Did you have a good Halloween, Isaiah? I had a really good Halloween. Did you get any candy yet? No, but I bought candy for myself a while ago. Mm -hmm. And I've been snacking on those Reese's for... The past month. Reese's. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Now that we've moved past Halloween, 
We can start focusing on Christmas. Have you made your Christmas list yet? I have started to garner some ideas mm-hmm. of things that I would like for Christmas. And are those things that you'd like for Christmas items or experiences? Oh, good question. I feel like it's harder to ask for an experience than an item. Mm-hmm. I, well, you might not be, you're, you're in the minority, I guess I'll say, because I have a survey here that coming up to the holidays, 72% of millennials and Gen Z's, which is clearly what we are, uh, would rather have gifts that are like trips to go somewhere or experiences than gifts that are like things. I like that. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. I think it's true. We've talked about this recently that more and more, like, people, particularly younger people, are more and more interested in uh, experiences, lifelong memories, than getting stuff. And apparently that holds true at Christmas time as well. But not for you? See, I think that I, there's parts of me that would rather have experiences, Mm -hmm. but it's a hard thing to ask for. Like, what do you say? You, if you say your Christmas list, if you put it together, mm-hmm. how do you ask for a trip to to Florida on there? Yeah, I'd like a a, a flight. I'd like a plane, a plane ticket, mm-hmm. please. It's just a harder thing. I think that it's easier for me. I have gone this way recently with with presents, like last Christmas. Yeah, I've been buying people experiences uh-huh. because, like, what am I going to get my mom and dad? If they if they want something, they can buy it. Like my parents. Yeah, yeah if they want anything, they can just buy it. So recently. I've leaned more towards like getting us like tickets to games and stuff that we can all mm-hmm. that we all want to go to that we can go to together as well as so, um. So you're saying that you think it's a, it's a good move. It's just harder to put that on a list. Yeah, it's harder to ask for. I think I've started buying experiences for other people, mm-hmm. like tickets and things like that, as my gifts to them rather than trying to buy them something that they, that they might like. Yeah, because you know it's a hit. Like if you know that they're an Ohio State fan. If you get them tickets to an Ohio State game, that's always a hit. Like mm-hmm. every time it's a hit, rather than buying them something that they may or may not use. Whereas asking for that can be tough depending on who yeah. you're asking it. No, for. you're right. Because if I, I was thinking about this, I think there's two reasons why, why this would be more difficult. Uh, one is because then, and I think this matters, then you don't get like stuff to open on Christmas Day, mm-hmm. for example, which is not as fun, but. Uh, once you get older too, more and more, you're doing like different Christmases anyways. You're just, all your gifts are broken. Like it doesn't really, it, it matters, but I don't think you should put too much weight on that. But the other thing is it, it would, it could seem a little presumptuous to put out a, a Christmas list. That's a bunch of concert tickets and getaways and stuff like that, as opposed to, Hey, I need a new blender or something. And then you have to tackle the, is the person who's buying this for you? Are they going with you? Yeah. So if you're asking for a trip oh, yeah. to Florida, if that's what you want to do, is whoever you're asking, if it's your girlfriend, your boyfriend, Mm -hmm. your mom, your dad, is that an experience that they're a part of? Or are you asking them for an experience that is just for you? And so that's a whole nother nother hurdle for you. Yeah, because then if they're buying you plane tickets or something, if if they were to do that. Or, yeah. Or even, like, if I want tickets to a Browns game. If my mom doesn't want to go to the Browns game, and she's buying me tickets for an experience that she's not going to be a part of, you know? And so that's that's, that's another hurdle. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful. But... That said, I'm kind of with this idea. I, you know, every year I struggle coming up with a Christmas and birthday list, but you're right. You get me concert tickets to a concert I want to go to. I'm not going to be upset about it. That's going to be fun for me. So, and I'm going to remember it for a while. So maybe this is the right move. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to the riot on radio. U. Pray, would you rather question at 8772 Radio U and get ready for today's question? It's a good one from Samuel, who texted in Would you rather be able to choose your name, like from birth, right? Or choose your birthplace or hometown? Which would you rather change if you could? 877 877- to Radio U. What are your first thoughts? If you don't like your name, which a lot of people, mm-hmm. since a surprising amount of people, 
don't like their name. Yeah. I feel like name might be an automatic pick for them. Yeah, that's probably that's probably a good call. But also, if you're not much of a fan of your hometown, and you would rather have just grown up somewhere else, taking your family, it's not like it's just you growing up there. You're taking yeah, your family, right. mm-hmm. your little immediate family, and going somewhere else. That could also be an option. That is the would you rather. Yeah. It's difficult to figure out for me because my first thought was neither one would necessarily drastically change. Because like, we're talking about doing this from birth. Neither would necessarily drastically change things. For what, like, it, it, what I mean is, if you change your name from birth, you're probably still the same person. If everything else is still the same. If you change your hometown... You're still the same person, right? You think it would change? Mm, That can change it. If you grew up in the country versus city. Yeah, but how do you know what that would change? How can you even know? It could change your experiences. If you grew up as like a city boy, Mm -hmm. if you grew up in the country, you may have different knowledge, different experiences. Mm -hmm. If your friends, it's a lot of like your friends too. Yeah. If your friends like to do all these things, you might have different experiences. I think there's a good possibility that name is going to be the overwhelming choice here. You think so? Yeah. I think there's, like you said, there's probably a lot of people that don't like their name and they, even if they may not necessarily have chosen uh, the town they grew up in, if they could choose to start it all over again, if you choose a different town, you have different friends. You don't, you don't get to be friends with the people you were friends with. So I don't know. That's my prediction, but we'll see what people say. Today's Would You Rather, 8772 Radio U. Let us know your thoughts. Would you rather change the name you're born with or change which town you grew up in? Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Would you rather change where you grew up if you could do it all over again? 8772 Radio U. The text in your response. Brian answered. Brian said, I'd rather change my name. Brian is very basic, and he is not basic. And then he says, I'm changing to Kevin. Should we, do you want to say it? Kevin's a good choice. Uh You know what? If you want to be Kevin, Brian. Yep. We can start calling you Kevin. We can call you Kevin, as far as we're concerned. You can start just telling us your name's Kevin. Um, Mark says... I would much rather choose where I live. I wake up in Ohio in the winter, and when I go outside, it hurts to breathe because it's so cold, so I'd rather live in a warmer climate. And he thinks Mark is a pretty good name. I like it because of the C. Mark with a C. Mm. Because Mark with a K, maybe change the name. Mark with a C, I like it. D says, I don't dislike my name, but I change the way it's spelled. This is something new about D that we didn't know, at least that I don't remember. D's name is actually Deanne. It's D. Oh, you didn't have that? I did not have that. I just knew her as D. D's name is actually D apostrophe A N N. And so she's tired of being called Dan or Diane. Or Deanne. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think I think you could be wise to change your name, actually, if that's true. I mean, why would she lie? It's true. Uh <laughs> I think I'm with you on that. She doesn't know. She's big. This is a D from Texas. Why would she want to change being from Texas? What are you thinking, Isaiah? I like Susanna's point. She says she doesn't care either way, but if you were born in like a, a rough place, a rough mm, area. Yeah, that's true. That can make a big difference. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm pretty cool with my name. I'm okay with Isaiah. Yeah. I do wish I had a name that could have a nickname, but... Besides the point, it's fine. You could be Zay. No, I don't like Zay, unfortunately. <laughs> just hasn't stuck. Um, and I also am okay with my hometown, and I would stay there. But mm-hmm. if I were to pick another town to yeah. live in, it would need to be like a drastic change, I think. Mm-hmm. And so what if you did like, what if you thought outside of the U.S. and you went for like Australia? And the reason I say this, because mm-hmm. I, I can't even name, I guess I could name Sydney. That's the only place I could name in Australia. Mm -hmm. But we could just do it based off accents. Uh, So you just, the only reason that you would change your town, your hometown is so that you would grow up with a different accent. Well, I don't have another reason. My hometown was great. Yeah. Um, 
I could go for an Australian accent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but if you, you wouldn't have an accent to them. Everybody well, I assume would, I'd come over every, here at some point. Every, oh, you still think so. Here's why Mark kind of round in a roundabout way actually talked me into, because I don't, I'm not wild about my name. I could change it, I thought, but I just don't think that would change that much. And even if I picked the name that I think, think now is really cool, if I had to grow up with it, I bet you I wouldn't think it was cool. Because I'm not cool. But true. Uh, if I, You've never said truer words. If I got to choose my hometown, think about this. Your life, like it or not, is going to revolve around where you grew up, especially if true. your parents still wind up living there. And so, like, I, for me, I don't know if I was anxious to get out of where I grew up, but I sure didn't have any besides my family and friends there. Like the actual area, I had no attachment to it because it wasn't, I didn't think it was a cool area. But if I grew up in a cool area, it would change the opportunities I would have chased or make me more likely to want to go back. And, you know, li like now I live around my parents, but for a long time I didn't. And maybe I would have gotten, you know, lived around my parents for longer. Or, you know, like, so if I was more attached also to the area as well, or if I grew up in a city where there was more opportunity. So, I think I'm going to say I would change where I grew up. However, if you asked me to, to pick a place, I don't know what I'd pick. I would go somewhere just, warmer. Yeah, I just would not pick, uh, I wouldn't pick rural Maryland. Because then you would have your whole little happy life with all your friends and your family. Yeah. And then they wouldn't have to move either. You could just stay in a warm place instead of it's cold outside. Yeah. This is a tough would you rather just because it actually feels so inconsequential in a way. It does. <laughs> Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. It's time for some useless knowledge. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. You all are going to answer. And if you get the questions right, you win absolutely nothing. Nix. Today is National Authors Day. Very nice. I wonder if we have any authors listening. Not a chance. <laughs> And so the question for useless knowledge today, the famed horror writer, Stephen King. You said horror? Horror, yeah. Got it. Horror writer, mm -hmm. Stephen King, has what is known as triskaidekaphobia. Say that again. Triskaidekaphobia. Okay. Which is the irrational fear of what? Mm. Triskaidekaphobia. All right. I think our author should know this one, right? Or anybody who has this fear. I guess so. 8772 Radio U. Text in with your guess for today's author-themed useless knowledge. If you get it right, you get it wrong. Doesn't matter. You win nothing. 8772 Radio U. will find out what the answer is next. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Doing a food fight this morning. A fast food fight because we stopped in at Arby's to get their brand new fried mac and cheese bites. And oh, do they smell good. I'm excited for this one. These look good thus far. They look crispy. They are warm. There's a lot of good signs here, mm -hmm. and Arby's well known for having some good apps. Yeah, good fried apps. Um, I will tell you, these are definitely made hot and fresh, and something that we talked about in the lead up to this yesterday on the show is many times you get a mac and cheese bite, and at most places, they're exactly the same. They're 100% the same. They're that triangular shape. These, though, these are their own special breed. These circular in nature, spherical, I guess you could say. They look like a hush puppy. Yes, they do. I've never seen a mac and cheese bite like this before, so I am intrigued. We got ranch. We got cheddar cheese sauce to dip in. Uh, I think, first of all, we got to just try them straight up and see if they're any good on their own. I'm excited. They're crispy. I mean, the outside of these oh, you could hear that. are extremely crispy. Very cheesy. Very crispy. Crunchy. However, the batter they are dipped in is more like bread crummy. Yep, it is. Other batters are more on the fake mac and cheese bites. Have a more 
kind of like pancake batter or whatever. I don't yep. know what that'd be called or corn dog batter, but this, this is definitely like more breadcrumb style. Pretty good though. I do, I do want to try these in the sauce. We got the nacho cheese here. I think the nacho cheese might put these over the edge as like a real winner. They're pretty small in nature. They're not a very big mac and cheese bite. You could easily eat it in one bite. They are. They're kind of like jalapeno they, poppers. That's right. They're definitely bites is very accurate. Also, they only allow you to order a four piece. There's no bigger or smaller size. And they're like $3.99 for that. And then the sauce, the cheese sauce is another dollar. A so dollar? that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. What's well, good? Hmm. The nacho cheese sauce, I won't lie, is not my favorite nacho cheese sauce. But it's not a bad one either. It's good. It's not the best for this. And it's not. I don't think it improves the mac and cheese bites by a dollar's worth, which is really the, the question. But I will go back and use it again. <laughs> yeah, I think I could too. Now, what about the ranch is free? Complimentary. Might be a better bet. Hmm. These are yummy. The, the crispiness on the outside is like almost onion ringy crispiness. That's Extremely good, crispy. That's a good way to put it. Onion ringy. I'm torn. I definitely, if I was ordering these myself, I would not, again, spring for the cheddar cheese, nacho, whatever sauce. Because it's a dollar and it's not worth it. I like the ranch, but do I like them better just straight up? Or do I like it with the ranch? It's tough to say. I think they can, they can stand on their own. Yeah. Now, where do they... Where do they stand on your mac and cheese bite hierarchy? They're definitely, they're definitely their own style of mac and cheese bite. They're good. They are, I would say, I like Sheets mac and cheese bites a lot. That is the standard mac and cheese bite I can think of. The triangle, the mm -hmm. gold orange, this is not that at all. It looks completely different. Mm -hmm. It's like a hush puppy onion ring mac and cheese bite is the best way I can describe it. Hush puppy shape, onion ring outside. With the mac and cheese bite in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think it's good though. I think I so prefer the Sheets mac and cheese bite, which is the standard like mm -hmm. yellow golden triangle. Yeah. And whatever they do with the batter at Sheets, that is, that's better than this batter. Yeah. Like any of your standard mac. And, and also if you've gotten them from the fair, and yet again, it's that standard triangle, like golden yellow. That one I prefer over this one. Mm -hmm. But this one's still. Uh, is a contender for something that I would get at Arby's. I think it's contender for their best side. Right up there with curly fries and mozzarella sticks, depending on how you feel about those. I have eaten, consumed all four of my mac and cheese bites. I definitely, they. I think they are improved with the ranch. I think that's a good move to get the ranch with them. And I just, as much as I do like them, I think they're good. I can't see myself choosing them over the mozzarella sticks. So unless you want to do kind of an app smorgasbord at Arby's, I, I definitely prefer the mozzarella sticks and I might even prefer the curly fries. So I mean, these are good though. They are good. They're good. I would prefer, I'm not a big mozzarella sticks person, so I don't get them at Arby's. I would get these for the mozzarella sticks. So if you find yourself in a place where you're not as much of a mozzarella stick guy, and you would never consider getting them at Arby's, mm -hmm. this would be a side that I would consider getting. That's I put it there with curly fries for me at the top. There you have it. The fried mac and cheese bite from Arby's. Food fight. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com.